in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Welcome to this evening Mass on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of the year in the ordinary times. A prophet is a spokesperson for God. He speaks only what God wants him to speak. The message he delivers may not be palatable as it calls for conversion, a change of heart, this explains why prophets were not only rejected by the people, but persecuted and even killed. Jesus, the prophet of the Father, was no exception. He too was rejected, persecuted and killed. As disciples of Jesus, all of us have a prophetic mission to be his messengers are we fulfilling our mission? Are we willing to accept rejection or even persecution for the sake of the word? Let us pause for a moment to look into ourselves and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. The intentions of this Mass is offered in thanksgiving to the Sacred Heart of Jesus by Rufus and for the eternal rest of Josephine Gita, <coughs> Sheila James, Lester James, Vivian Jeel, Rosemary Amala Rani and also for all the souls in purgatory. So in order to offer this mass in a worthy manner, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask for God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the book of Jeremiah. In the, do in the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, appointed you a prophet to the nations. But you, dress yourself for work, arise, and say to them, Dress yourself for work, arise and say to them, Everything that I command you, do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I behold, I make you this day fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judiah, its official, its peace, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. My mouth will tell you of your salvation, Lord. My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Free me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Response? My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Be my rock, my constant refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold, my God. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My Refuse. mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust. O Lord, from my youth, on you I have leaned from my birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my help. Response? My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. My mouth will tell of your justice and all the day long of your salvation, O God. You have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonder still. Response? My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Second reading. Paul's Hum to Love is one of the best known passages in the entire Bible. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 31, and chapter 13, verses from 1 to 13. Brethren, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoice with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongue, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I become a man, I gave up childish ways. For now, 
we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope and love abide these three. But this greatest love, this is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hallelujah. The Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Hallelujah. Please stand for me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What you heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, where there came a great famine over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and put him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill on which the city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But passing through the midst of them, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's go back to the date of our baptism. Probably many of us don't remember. We were just babies. But anyway, let me tell you what happened with the oils. We use two oils at baptism. The first one is used before the sprinkling of the water and it is called the oil of catechumen. It strengthens the person to being turned away from sin. 
And the second oil is the most important oil which comes after the sprinkling of the water. It is called the oil of chrism or chrism oil if you prefer. It takes a name actually because it is blessed at the chrism mass each year by the local bishops and is then sent to the local churches to be used obviously at baptism, used again at confirmation and used at ordination. So going back to the baptism, either the priest or a deacon, whoever is officiating at the baptism, he dips his thumb in that oil and he traces a cross on the crown of the child's head, marking him or her as a Christian. So each and every one of us, we've been anointed with this oil of chrism as a priest, prophet, and king. In the first reading, we heard from uh, prophet Jeremiah how he was chosen by God from inception. For us Christians, it is not an accident or chance that we are baptized. It is not by chance that we are here this evening. Each and every one of us here, we have been chosen, called and anointed to be God's messengers here on earth. We could say we are the prophets like Jeremiah, we are the prophets of the 21st century. We share in Jesus' priestly ministry, in his prophetic ministry, and in his kingly ministry. In the second reading, we heard from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, a very, very well-known passage, in fact, and it's called the hymn to love. Almost all the weddings I have officiated so far, this reading was chosen by the bride and the groom, and it is quite popular at weddings. English language teaches us that love is a verb, and it also teaches us every verb is an action word. It's an action word, it's not something superficial. For Christian, it is just not feeling or emotion. Love is an action word. And St. Paul tells us in this beautiful passage what love is and what love does and what love does not do. This might seem totally in contradiction to the secular world we live in today. But for us Christians, I think it must be the breastplate for each and every one of us. For these words to be imprinted deeply in our hearts, in our thoughts, words, and actions. In the gospel we heard, Jesus was not welcomed in his hometown because he was calling them to conversion. He was asking them to change. And it's not easy, is it? We're all comfortable the way we are. We don't want to change. What are they trying to do? They're trying to kill him. Conversion is very, very important. On the 25th of January each year, exactly a month after Christmas, each year on the 25th of January, we celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. You might think, well, well, he is the only priest, well, sorry, the only apostle who has this feast day for conversion. Because conversion and encounter go hand in hand. And the church wants to teach us the importance of conversion. So we could say it is our feast day too. But unless we have that encounter with the risen Lord, we cannot truly convert. Our encounter may not be as dramatic as St. Paul's on his way to Damascus when he was Saul, converted and he became Paul. But still it is a must. It is a must for us to have 
that encounter with the risen Lord. We may ask, well, how do I know if I've had that encounter yet? All I can say is look at your lives. If you're not sure, ask your friends and family. Our lives will change upside down overnight. Then you will know you've had that encounter with the risen Lord. As followers of Christ, we must understand our lives here on earth will be no different to Jesus' life here on earth. St. Thomas Aquinas would say, cross provides an example for every virtue. Why? Jesus was naked on the cross, derided, spat upon, struck, and crowned with thorns, finally given vinegar to drink. Let us not then be attached to the fine clothes and riches, for they divided his garments among them. Let us not seek honors, for he knew mockery and beating. Let us not seek honorable rank, because they plaited a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. Let us not thirst after fine foods, because for his thirst they gave him vinegar to drink. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, life as a Christian is not easy. Trust me, it is a challenge and it is a decision we make each and every day. And each and every day we are called to convert, convert, turn away from our old ways and turn towards God. Christ did not promise an easy life here on earth. If we think we're having an easy life, then perhaps we need to think again, are we leading a true Christian life? Let us pray this evening. Like St. Paul, we too can say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Amen. Please stand. <coughs> and now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, Creator of Rock heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended into hell, and was that he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I believe in the life everlasting. Amen. The liturgy of the word today reminds us of our prophetic mission in this world. As followers of Christ, we are to be his prophets and messengers of the kingdom. It is no easy job to speak on behalf of God, not merely with our words, but with our lives as well. We run the risk of being rejected and even persecuted. Let us pray to the Lord for courage and grace to carry out our prophetic mission, saying, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Father the Pope, the bishops and all the leaders of the Church, that they may focus more and more on their prophetic role in the church rather than on matters of administration. We pray to the Lord. Your response? Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. We did not belong to Israel by birth, 
but in your mercy you have made of us outside us your new israel grant us lord that we may always render you true worship and praise in your house of prayer we pray to the lord your response lord, lord mercifully hear our prayer, our prayer that the leaders of the world may humbly and obediently listen to the voices of the people whom they are called to serve we pray to the lord your response lord, lord mercifully hear our prayer that people who are oppressed and discriminated on grounds of color race or nationality may be assisted in their struggle to obtain equality of rights we pray to the lord your response lord mercifully hear our prayer for those chosen by god to serve as prophets that they may be true to their message and their god assigned mission we pray to the lord your response lord mercifully hear our prayer let us add our own personal intention silently heavenly father we bring to you all our petitions counting on your infinite goodness and mercy grant us always the grace to be true to our christian commitment in the everyday circumstances of our lives we ask this through christ our lord amen brothers sir yes my we accept to god the almighty father we the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all the holy church o oh lord we bring to your altar these offerings of our service be pleased to receive them we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption we ask thee through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just this truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for by his birth he brought a renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins 
by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending to you o father he has unlocked the gates of heaven and so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in his passion, he took bread and uh, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the apples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you." In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the apples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins." Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and His resurrection, we offer You, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that Your elders worthy to be in Your presence and minister to You. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, Your church is spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with the Father, our Pope. Our apostolic administrator, Most Reverend Peter Abir, and all the clergy, remember your servants, Rose Mary, Amala Rani, Josephine Gita, Sheila James, Lester James, Vivian Jill, and Father A. Pichamuttu, and all the souls in purgatory. 
whom you have called from this world to yourself, from the day who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with the Saint Joseph, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Guru Hemi Demi Nim in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Our glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray to our only Father in the words of the Lord Himself, starter. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gently grant peace in our day, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Dear Apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of a church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.